When it comes to draining your water heater because you want to clean out sediment or replace it, you do not want to get after it when the current water temperature is somewhere between 115 and 140 degrees. With a little bit of planning, we can get it to a safe and useful temperature. If you don't cool it off, your only option is to pour the hot water down the street and make sure that no one plays in it before it hits the sewer system. The goal of this video is twofold. First, how long does it take to cool, in my case, a 50 gallon water heater with no assistance? Second, how quickly can we get it to cool down with some regular hot water use? I'm in the middle of running some pressure tests for an in-progress video series on plumbing leak detection, and thermal expansion from the water heater is wreaking havoc on my tests. These are my baseline tests with the water heater left on overnight and absolutely no water use. So a couple days ago, I turned off the power to the unit to let it do some cooling on its own. The water heater is set to 120 degrees Fahrenheit from the manufacturer, and it's located in a room that's currently hovering between 65 and 70 degrees. After 50 hours elapsed with everyone in the house avoiding using hot water taps, I called this experiment done. Using the closest faucet, the original temperature started out at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. 50 hours later, the thermometer read 95. So on its own, the temperature had only gone down about 15 degrees. To cool it to room temperature without any intervention will take closer to a week. The good news is a tank water heater is well insulated and holds the temperature fairly well. The other good news is we can speed up cooling by turning off the power, run the dishwasher, have everyone in the house take a shower or bath, and do some loads of laundry without having wasted perfectly good hot water and your hard-earned dollars on gas or electricity. After using five and a half gallons on the dishwasher, we're at 107 degrees. After a 15 gallon shower, the temperature is now at 101. A 7.2 gallon bath takes it down to 89. An 11 gallon load of laundry with air quotes on the setting marked hot takes it to 79. Again, recall the original setting of 120 degrees cooled to 110 by the time it went under the slab, through a pony wall, and out the kitchen faucet. So the actual temperature in the unit is still warmer than what we're seeing here, but it's quite a bit more manageable at this point. To be fair, it also took about two gallons to get a good reading on the thermometer between each event. So that's an additional eight gallons, which you could use on a quick shower or almost a full second load of laundry. But to make this experiment more scientific, an additional two gallons should be added to each temperature check. This is also a good time to note the events were all done in a specific order. Using the hottest water to sanitize the dishes, then go in order of who wants a hot shower to who wants a cooler bath where we'd normally be mixing in some cold water. Now when you drain your unit, you can use the water in the tank to water grass, a garden, or whatever other use you can come up with to actively use the water or you can get some solid readings on your water pressure gauge tests. If you're curious about the fixture charts with the total usage indicated in the results, this is the high level daily event tracker in the Fin app. I have a Fin Plus installed, which is a whole house water monitor and shutoff system, keeping tabs on my plumbing for leaks and other potential problems. You can check out some of my past videos on Fin Plus, and I have more coming out on these water monitor solutions. I wish you the best on whatever water heater project you have going, and I will see you next Friday with improved results on plumbing leak detection. Okay, ready? No! <laughs> Dude, did anything even hit? <laughs> it got on the roof. Let's do it again.